Good evening, everyone. We are here tonight just to welcome you and say, hey. <laughs> um, well, we're okay. <laughs> um, gosh, we are here for Community Conversations. Um, it's officially January. We're in 2021. Lord have mercy. Hey, New Year. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we really just wanted to spend a little time with you and um, celebrate where we are, what we've done, celebrate our partners. Um, it's been a, a full, full year, and, and we're blessed to have somebody joining us. We've got a guest with us tonight. <laughs> Hi, Miss Crystal. How you doing? We have Miss Crystal. Crystal Ferrer is the campus life technician at Yuba College. Yuba College has been an amazing partner to the Village Yuba Sutter. Um, the community conversations that we've been presenting are co-sponsored by Yuba College, and they have just been been just wonderful partners with us and for us um, since we started this this uh, little project of ours. Yeah, very supportive, very supportive. And for those of you who don't know. Uh, this is Tanya Matt. Oh yeah, and I'm Megan Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> While well, we're introducing people, <laughs> and we are the Village Yuba Center, yeah. and um, this is our our segment of community conversations, and we wanted to kind of give you a year in review of what happened in this last year. And um, like um, Tanya said, that Yuba College has been a wonderful support to us. Um, we've had a couple conversations um, that have taken place, and um, this will be um, one that we will be able to get out to the public. A few of them are, are on the Yuba College campus, um, their website, but um, this is very exciting, and we, we're very grateful to have you here with us, Crystal, working with us, and and um, let's, let's conversate. Let's have this conversation. <laughs> you know, when we think about the year, when we think about the year, and Crystal, we're we're excited that you're here because not only do you support us and support what we stand for as a village of Besetter, but you also have such an important role at the college, you know, working directly with the students. Would you like to talk a little bit about what it is that you actually do for Yuba College? Yeah, yeah, I would. Um, I, first, I want to say Village Yuba Sutter, Yuba College partnership has been amazing. Um, it's been a lot of fun to, to see the uh, culmination of, of a lot of different ideas into community conversations um, and that being a result of the partnership. Um, what I do at Yuba College is as a campus life technician, I help facilitate a lot of the campus life events. Um, 2020 has been difficult, right? A lot of it went online, um, but a lot of it that gave a huge opportunity for more equity and access to these events, right? Um, students were allowed to view some of the, the movies when they normally would have been in class instead. And it's been a big part in getting, um, getting some, some focus on, uh, in particular, some of the initiatives that Yuba College has had. Um, the largest one being creating more equitable opportunities, activities, and safer spaces for students on the campus. Um, nice. While students haven't been on the campus recently, uh, we're definitely yep. excited to get these prepared for when we do come back face-to-face -face, um, sure. and work in that virtual platform from here on out. Uh, one of the things that I've had the pleasure of doing is serving as a, um, a resource for our lead committee. And, uh, and it's been great to see some phenomenal activities um, start out as ideas for an equity plan and turn into something that so many people are excited to implement. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit more about what those are later, so. Nice. When you think about, um... When, when I think about like what the year brought and the challenges, but also it, there was some, there was a lot of beauty around what we were able to do and, and how we saw ourselves and how we saw our colleagues. And so like for you, Megan, like, and I know we're the village, you would say like, this is Kumbaya and we're together, but we all had different experiences and, and we, we all had, um, different things happen. So yeah. do you want to talk some about maybe some of the challenges, but also some of the beauty too? Yeah, um, absolutely. So um, how even we became the village Yuba Center was um, because of the things that were taking place within our country. You know, we were hit with this pandemic and um, I personally work, I'm a medical assistant at Adventist Health. So I, I do work in healthcare. Um, so I got to see firsthand 
as it unraveled. Um, fortunately enough, I am a, a, a floater, so I don't have a doctor. So I was off for the first part of the um, pandemic um, and home with my children, which was a wonderful blessing for me. But during that time, there was a lot of civil unrest. Um, we had the George Floyd situation take place, Breonna Taylor, um, just to name a, the two not top names right now, and there's only a few. But anyhow, during that time, there was a wrestling in my spirit that something needed to be said. We needed to, to be able to express our pain. Um, you know, this is historic for, especially in the black community, when, when things like this take place, it affects us greatly. Mm -hmm. It's no different from when we were on plantations and watched it done, that those feelings come back. Um, you know, it, it's absolutely generational trauma. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hear people say all the time, but what, you, you were never a slave. I was never a slave owner. Honey, all those things are, are, are they, they're passed on okay? <laughs> from generation yeah. to generation. So anyhow, um, my spirit was wrestling with the fact that we needed to do some type of march. I saw the marches taking place all throughout the country. And I felt like um, our town needed to have an outlet to, to express themselves as well. I felt like I needed to express myself. I, I was angry, I was hurt, hurt. You know, I just was broken that this was taking place yet again. We have seen it so many times, um, it's just recursive. And um, so the most high put in my spirit to, to get out there and march, I was not going to do it initially. Um, when I brought, brought it up to my husband, he said, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> We're not, we didn't, you know, but we were afraid of the response that we would get from our own law enforcement. We didn't know how they were going to react to us. You know, other um, cities were, were being met with brute force. We didn't want to be shot with rubber bullets and, and um, tear gas. So uh, we had to be cautious. So, um, you know, it was deposited in um, my family's heart, Brenda um, Garcia, she came over and, and said, um, I feel like we need to march and you need to lead it. And that was all the confirmation I needed. And by 6.30 that night, we were marching in Marysville. And from there, just everything unraveled. And, and from there, my sister came into my life and, and Tanya and I just put our hearts and minds and spirits together. Our spirits were already together, you know, um, but we, we formally were introduced to one another. And, um, and from there, the village was birthed. And, and we've been able to, we accomplished a, a whole other march after the initial march. Um, so there was two wonderful marches that took place within our community. The second march, all of law enforcement participated um, on both sides of the bridge. We had DA there, we had our um, city councilman members there. We had um, the, the ma manager of the Marysville there. So we had presence there, absolutely. And everyone had the same feeling in their heart that this is, uncalled for. We can't have this happen in our, in our area. We cannot. Mm -hmm. And from there, we were able to have Juneteenth in the midst of all of this, the most high provided for us to have this. Our, even our, our um, health department got involved with the marches. They supplied sanitation and, and, and um, mask and anything mm -hmm. that we needed. We had businesses, Jerry Handy's business for 4G and Jim King's business, um, Rolling Stone Pizza. They came out and supported, gave water. Other businesses on the streets, and uh, forgive me for not remembering their names off the top of my head, but so many people reached out to us, donated and did what, what, what they felt was necessary and, and exercise their grief for what was going on as well. So it was a blessing. So um, in this ugly situation, beautiful things progressed, beautiful things came above it. So, you know, the seed has to be in darkness before it can grow into the flower. And, and, and from the darkness has come these flowers. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we, I give thanks for, thanks for that. So this year has been quite incredible. Um, we've gotten support from, from the radio stations and, and um, Appeal Democrat, KUBA, um, all these different places that have um, featured us and, and talked with us. And, and of course, Yuba College, we were able to do the voters drive with you guys. And just all these different things have just progressed because one march took place. And then, pow, here, here we were. Um, our law enforcement has been an incredibly working with us and hearing us, really hearing us. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's been the point is hearing us, not just. Not, not just, just listening. Exactly, not just listening. Not just, just listening. And yes. they ask good questions. Yeah. I think that, um, and, and, and more to come, we have a community conversation coming up um, with our law enforcement panel mm -hmm. coming up soon, but 
every conversation that we have had has been well received and good questions were asked and they were asked from an earnest place of wanting to learn mm -hmm. and wanting to know and understand and understand yeah, yeah. and that that was beautiful yeah, yeah. that was absolutely beautiful and, and we're so appreciative of 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 being um of space being held for our community for the experiences of our community and, and the concerns that our community has continued to express. Mm -hmm. So there, there's been a, a lot of good that's come. Absolutely, and, but we know that there's a lot of work to be done. Sure. And, and, and our, our community members and law enforcement knows it as well and are, are very open to the work being done. So that's why we're able to sit here and, and with full confidence knowing that the work that's about to go forth in 2021 is gonna be even greater than what you saw in 2020. We're only getting started and mm -hmm. like, this is just the beginning. And um, again, we can't, uh, I'm very humbled and grateful for the response that we're getting. Now, don't get me wrong. There was negativity as well. People weren't sure about, especially when the marches were taking place. They weren't sure, you know, if we were Antifa or, you know, what we, what our motives were. I am a community member. I've lived in this community for over 27 years. She's a community member. She may not live in this area right now, but she was born and bred here. You know, um, my husband not is born. born. Well, not born, but you know. <laughs> My husband was born and bred here. I'm originally from Los Angeles. Right, yeah, okay, so. My family still lives here. Right, right. So we have ties to this community. Definitely. There's no way Definitely. in the world that. The um, people that we love are here. Exactly, sure. and there's no way in the world. I, I, You know, we personally know business owners in this area. Yeah. What do I look like telling my friend, move out the way, I got to burn your restaurant down because I'm mad as hell. <laughs> like, the, no, that's never been the intention of our hearts. And. Um, that just shows you how media, you know, just really plays us against each other. But um, I give thanks for everything that we've been able to accomplish in this little small, I mean, it literally is not that much time. Less than six months. Yes, less than six months that, you know, we, um, our name is out there and people are recognizing the work that we are trying to do. Like, it's very humbling when people say, thank you for everything that you do in the community. And it's just like, my God, I really just want to be the change that I see in the world. But if you're blessed by it, my desires to inspire honey god bless it you know i i it is what it is so i give thanks so crystal can you i i i know like we just talked a lot but <laughs> <laughs> but i really i really am very in and full disclosure for those who don't know me i am the director of grant research and development for yuba community college district um i do work for the district um i actually went to yuba college uh, so, so Megan too. So, so I probably have a little, little inside track when I start talking about what happens, you know, internal to our organization, but Yuba College is such a special, special place. And if you don't know, you should get to know the leadership team, get to come on campus when you can. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but, but, <awesome>. but I <laughs> what I really mean by that, there is, there's magic on that campus, there is love and there is community and you will find a home with the people that work there. Mm -hmm. Because for everyone that says, well, it's just a job, it's just a paycheck. I can show you about 20 other people who really, really care and love our students. Um, our students are first at Yuba College and Crystal, in that vein, can you talk about some of the things that Yuba College is doing? Because I know there, there was a shift. There was, you know, trugging along, we're teaching our students, we're loving on our students, and then boom, George Floyd. Yeah. And that shift that happened, there was a shift in energy that happened. There was a shift in mental health that happened. Our students felt that. Our community felt that. Hell, I felt that. Mm -hmm. I cried every day for three and a half weeks. I would sit in meetings holding back tears mm -hmm. to, to hear, to watch that video, right? Can you talk, Crystal, about how 2020 affected how we serve students who belong to this community that we all love and some things perhaps that, that came out of that good and bad that came out of that for Yuba College. So I definitely would like to start out by saying that as an educational institution, we have a lot to learn too, even though we're teaching, right? Like that is right. our heart. We have lessons to learn too. And I think one of the most valuable lessons that we learned this year 
was about responding to these things, not just for um, the sake of a response, because that's, that's easy, right? Mm -hmm. The responses that we gave were directed specifically to students and specifically to faculty and staff and administrators and specifically to the, the community. Um, we wanted to make it known that we, uh, as, a, as an educational institution, not only hear what's going on and see what's going on, but we're going to be um, an active and engaged partner in change going mm -hmm. forward. And it was... To say that it was a catalyst is, it doesn't quite describe the explosion of change that happened afterwards. Right. That was inspiring to see. Um, right. Immediately, there were big partnerships in, in drafting um, responses that were about just being heartfelt, but also about inviting people into conversations and inviting mm -hmm. people into to um, really facilitate the change that needs to happen at the college, in the community, in the world, right? To be an engaged participant in these changes. Um, and, and from that, uh, Yuba College had its own call to action um, and a lot, a lot started moving very, very quickly. Uh, there was an equity plan that was developed recently before, before 2020. Um, and it was just fascinating to see suddenly it was, energized with this, I see how this would be a benefit. I see how this helps our students. I see how this helps our faculty, our colleagues, right? Our community. And people had this deeper understanding that it isn't just an activity. It's yeah. about life. It's about a way of life. It's about creating equitable opportunities for everybody in our community. And, um, and one of the things that, that was really fantastic to see is is especially when we talk about applying what we've learned, right? Um, right. First and foremost, our, um, our public safety program did a real evaluation of what they're teaching, especially in their police academies, their post academies um, and things like that. They had a, a real discussion about methodologies, um, what's in the curriculum and what they can do to be better and to respond appropriately. Um, and, and it was, it was interesting to see that and it's starting to really, those discussions are starting to, to really evolve into actionable plans, into change in curriculum, into, to a change in how faculty teach the students. And, and when we say this, we're talking about the police that are coming up, right? The, the police that are going to be, and that's a great place to start change. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. really hard to change institutionalized issues. It's right. so much easier to start it from the beginning. And, right. and this, it's a good opportunity. So um, I definitely would say that the Eva College learned, learned that lesson and, and is now applying it. It's fantastic to see. So yeah, and I, I, another thing that I can say that, uh, that was really cool to see is um, we have an identity and engagement center. Uh, it's been in the, the equity plan for a while. Um, I'm so excited. To <laughs> <understand it. laughs> Me too. It's beautiful. It's painted. It's, oh, it looks gorgeous. And <laughs> the plans that we have for it, the learning that can happen, it just, just in a room, there's so much opportunity in a room. And, yeah. and it, it's amazing to see how many faculty and staff were excited about it. And we're excited to, they're going, they are excited to use the resources once we, we are able to grand open it because it, mm -hmm. it's truly an in-person uh, center. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not easy to convert something when we haven't even rolled it out in person yet. Uh, but right, right. once you are in the center, there's an ambiance of, of newness, of an ability to build on, on so much and, and it's, it's exciting to see that. And I can't wait until students are able to go in and experience it. Um, we have clubs on campus. Our, um, our Black Student Union is a great example. Our Gay, our Gay Straight Alliance is another example of clubs that could, could benefit from demonstrating what a safe space is, what appropriate mm -hmm. language, language matters, what appropriate okay. language is used. Um, and, and it's not only going to be a safe space, but an educational space too, so. 
Very good. That's exciting. It is. That's very exciting. I was in BSU when I was on campus. Um, Valerie was the... Um, the Miss Valerie Harris. Yes, Miss Valerie, Valerie Harris was the... Yeah was teaching us at that time. And um, my husband and I both uh, were a part of the, the group and it was wonderful. I'm still in contact with um, some of the students, um, Roshni, you know, she and I are really good friends. And um, so that was a, a wonderful experience um, being a part of that group at that time. That was a lot of years ago, we won't discuss that. Okay, well, can we, <laughs> so back in 1984, Ooh, we yeah. really wanna go back. I, I actually started the first BSU at Lyndhurst High School. Um, and I'm a mentor for um, our Emoji BSU program at Yuba College that, that we nurture and that we are looking forward to growing. Um, we have so many students that um, find value in having a learning community for students of color. Absolutely. And we absolutely at the Village of Center want to be a safety net for our BSU students. And we've got some stuff in the works now to really support our BSU students. We're looking forward to making those connections um, in 2021. Absolutely. Representation matters. It matters. It matters. Very, it matters. Much. Very much. And, you know, it, it's needed. And, and for those of us who didn't grow up with it, you know, we know what we missed, especially mm -hmm. when we see it in other places that that has it. And um, we know we know where we live. You know, um, but <laughs> and, and I'm not I'm not trying to say that in a I'm not being disparaging, but <laughs> but we know where we live. We're, except we know where we live, and and we know that. You know, hey, I went to Marysville High School um, as, uh, you know, at, at what, what years? In the 1999s. <laughs> I graduated in 2000. Okay, there we go. And um, at that time, <laughs> what year is this? No. Um, oh anyhow, but at that time, you know, I was always, there was always one or two of us in the class. And um and I had no black teachers. I've never had a black teacher. Uh, well, let me take that back. JT Westmoreland was um, one of my teachers out there. I love Mr. Yes, Westmoreland. Yes, he was a wonderful man. And, he was and, best friends with my dad. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Well, this is another conversation. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, shout out to Karen and <laughs> so, His kids. But he was, he was uh, the, the teacher that I had there. So uh, the only black teacher that I had there. But I had to, there was moments, you know, I remember Black History Month and being in my history class and my teacher not wanting to teach and, and putting on the three students. And here I am actively in my church at this time. And, and we're doing, you know, the Martin Luther King marches. We're doing all these different things. And I'm saying, hey, if you don't want to teach, that's cool. I can have people come in and talk about Black History Month. That ensued a whole debate in the class. Like, why do we even need to learn this? Because there's such a separation. Black history is American history. Like there's no separation. Like we are one and the same, but at the same time, it's the relevance of our history is, is been watered down. So, you know, and it's time for us to have those conversations when um, Tanya and I were able to sit down recently with law enforcement, we felt it was very necessary that we, we give the history of how law enforcement even became, you know, and why this, uh, this relationship between the black community and law enforcement is so um, ill. And it's been since its genesis. Law enforcement didn't start, you know, just a few years ago. And that, that badge represents a lot for the black community. That badge was the, the overseer, overseers and the slave catchers, you know, and, and that, that badge is still adorned to this day. It didn't change. They didn't give a new symbol. It's still the same badge. So there's still the same history attached to that. There's still, mm -hmm. still the same stigmas attached to that. There's still the same stereotypes. And like you said, they're trying to break down, you know, the, the, the language, the land gauge, you know, how you speak and what you say will gauge the way the conversation is going to go and what the outcome of what that's going to be. So mm -hmm. um, it's just a blessing that we're even having these conversations with them. They, were very enlightened by us mm -hmm. and by the history they didn't even know because that history is not shared anymore those things are, are have been um displaced and and said oh well that's not our history that's that's not you know we can forget about that that was so long ago but, uh, but we need to remember 9 11. <laughs> you know our history is important and, and it's not just fragments of it this history is absolutely important and it's the fabric of america you know, the black, the black uh, lives of this uh, country is the fabric of America. We're, we're, the, we're the needle and the thread. 
So um, it's important that we, we say what we need to say and be where we need to be. And if we can't sit at your table, honey, we're making our own. So it's okay. We're okay. You know, we'll be in the room regardless. So I'm excited about that. So go ahead, mama. What else? <laughs> Whatever you want to say. <laughs> I would like to say that that's one of the things that, um, that's such a blessing that I think this last year uh, really saw was the community partnerships that emerged locally in the Yuba Sutter region. Because some of these partnerships that emerged and and not just at those upper levels of politicians and things like that, but just like you said, businesses and local restaurants and just neighbors, right? How different everything is just because these partnerships emerged. And, and we see it here even at Yuba College with faculty working in, with these, uh, these small groups and it, as part of LEAD and, and more classified um, which are the, the staff members at Yuba College participating in greater numbers in, in helping with the, uh, the activities come to, to fruition. Mm -hmm. It's been really great to see how many people have stepped up and spoken out. And, and that's, that's not something that I think a lot of people in this area expected. So mm -hmm. it was really, but really good that change. I, speaking of, I didn't mean to step over you and, and step on your words. I apologize. But as soon as you said partnerships, you know, I immediately thought about David Reed at Yuba Sutter Arts and Culture. Now, originally it used to be Yuba Sutter Arts. And interesting, as they've added culture, David really reached out to us and made sure that we knew of opportunities um, that that he was looking at and and he sought our counsel he really gave us an opportunity to give input to his planning and what he hopes to do for his organization and he has we formed a partnership with them and in fact were awarded our very first grant. Yes. Um, we received a, a very a five thousand dollar grant from Yuba Sutter Arts and Culture, and um, we will be using those funds um, to build capacity within the organization and specifically to sponsor several of our upcoming events. So we hope that everyone will look out for those as we push them out of our Facebook, and you'll see that logo. And we we just appreciate so very much. David's willingness to work with us. We're a very, very new organization. Um, we are not yet a 501c3, so we are working in partnership with David, And but we will be eventually. That's something we will we aspire to and will grow into. Mm -hmm. But currently, um, David is our, our, our partner in that way. But um, thank you, David. Thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> but we just so appreciate um, his his invitation and his openness mm -hmm. to hearing from us. And, you know, I'm going to say this and, and he will not deny it. When he talks about being the old white guy in the room, it tickles me to death because he, he understands the value that we bring being women of color, being women who have contacts and love for the local community mm -hmm. as he does as well, but certainly being able to speak to our culture and, and his respect for our culture mm -hmm. um, is wonderful. And so thank you again, David Reed. He, he has really stepped up and, and been a partner with us and for us. And Kristen Sachs, yes. you know, Chief yes. Sachs, um, very, very early on. Yeah. He, I mean, uh, so when we did the marches and I got the first initial phone call or, or message from him, um, I thought he was going to shut us down. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, no, girl, you can't do that here, you know, but never once, it, it was never his intention. He knew we had the right to do what we were trying to do, um, but he wanted to make sure that we knew that he was not our adversary in this, um, that he supported what we were doing. And from day one, he marched with us. He provided services for us for uh, law enforcement protection um, and in both marches. And we mapped out, we sat together, mapped out our route and how we were going to do the march. And, and, and we got um, Chief Landon involved. He's been amazing as well. So even both sides. So Yuba Sutter is really truly what it is because we are working on both sides of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Although I, you know, I'm a, I'm a Marysville girl. Uh, I'm originally from Los Angeles, but my heart hasn't been in Marysville. And, um, but Yuba Sutter, the Sutter County has been wonderful as well. Sheriff Barnes and, um, you know, and then back in Yuba, Yuba County, Chief um, Sheriff Wendell. So um, all of these men have been exceptional. Um, our own Chief Sachs has been right there with us. He helped us plan Juneteenth. He, um, he has been, you know, um, a part of 
certain things that we're planning, you know, he's made things available to us that we wouldn't have had available to us. And we give mm -hmm. thanks for those things. So we, we are very excited about the partnership that we have with him and, um, and our, all our law enforcement at this time. And, you know, let me just put this out there. I know for a lot of people, um, us working with them is controversial um, for some people, um, you know, our, in, in our own community, you know, we don't, we don't talk with the police, you know, and, and, and that's, if, if we do, it's, it's, it's dangerous for us in, in our mind. So we're, we're trying to keep this in the, in the most vein where we get real work done. It's not about, you know, a blame game where, like we explained to them, we're not asking you to apologize for being officers. We're not asking you to apologize for being white. We're not asking you to do any of those things. Mm -hmm. What we're asking you to do is hear our hearts mm -hmm. and, and how can we affect change to make sure that these situations that are happening in these bigger cities do not take place here. And they have taken place here before in the past, but in recent times, we haven't had um, uh, inundated in a pre police brutality or our or, or or, or, or citizens being killed by police. We haven't been inundated with that and that's a blessing and we wanna keep it that way. And um, they have openly um, said that they are, will actively um, work with us and, and, and make sure that the mindset is changed and we can really do some tangible work. We don't, we're not about just having these conversations. It's not about, we're, we're, we're looking for tangible results, things that we can, pass on from generation to generation. And really to affect, you know, to affect the policy changes that need to happen. Absolutely. Um, to look at curriculum, mm -hmm. to sit on committees. We, we fully intend to continue to be present as we develop these relationships, but more importantly, as changes happen within the systems. So, um, we're not waiting to be invited to the table because there needs to be accountability and we need to hold our officers accountable. We need to hold our city leadership accountable. We need to ask the right questions, be prepared to hear the answers so that conversations can happen and the community understands that they need to be involved mm -hmm. and they need to not be afraid to engage in the way that we are engaging. So our goal as the Village Uba Setter is to be the bridge. We want to be the bridge between these organizations that people typically have feared or have just not understood and the community that we all love and want to serve and protect. Because the other side of that pancake is reminding our community that when they take that uniform off, these officers become husbands and mothers and wives and sisters and brothers. They go home to families that love them just like we do. The bottom line is we all want to make it home, yeah. right? We all want to get home to the people that we love. So, and I hope they don't hate that I'm saying this, but when I see all that thin blue line stuff, and I think that all that does is divide us. When people start saying that we bleed blue, I think that divides us. No, you don't. You are a police officer because it is your job. When you take it off, you go home to your family, just like we want to. Mm -hmm. And our community needs to start seeing our officers as people. And our officers have to see our community as people. Mm -hmm. We each have a job, a role, and a function. But at the end of the day, we all want to get home safely. We really want to just remind um, humanity to be humane. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, remind you to, that we are all humans and, and um, uh, just be humane and, and, and we can get through this. Um, no judgment. No, you know, just be humane. We're not, uh, we're, we don't all fit the description. And, and, and that's on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. They don't all fit the description of being bad right. cops and we don't all fit the description of being criminals. And once we see each other for who we truly are, which is humans, then we'll get past all of this. And that's, I think that's what we're trying to really also let people see that, you know, remind them we are all humans and we need to act humanely with one another. That's a big benefit, I think, to what community conversations in this partnership is about is it's it's about inviting everybody into this conversation about wow. how everyone can um, make the changes that are needed, that are very needed to see the humanity in everybody, right? At the end of the day, you're right. We're really all just members of the community. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, it doesn't exactly. matter what uniform anybody wears to work. 
Mm-hmm. Once that uniform is gone, once the name tags off, once all of it's up, we're part of the community, plain and simple. And, and that's, I think, that's the thing that what the one thing that Yuba College is most excited about with the partnership with the village Yuba Sutter is we can amplify that, right? Mm-hmm. We're here to really make sure that we invite everyone into this conversation and, yeah. and offer that space to, to have these discussions. And I know the, the very first video, which is, is linked on the, the Yuba College website, we'll, we'll go ahead and post it with this, was, um, was fantastic because it included politicians from all over the area, right? Yeah. And that's, that's who everybody was voting for. That's mm-hmm. who helps right. determine our policy. Right? right. That's the conversation that, that the community is being invited to with this. So it's we were exciting. really proud of that and excited about that, too. And again, thank you to Yuba College for understanding the importance of providing a platform for us to continue to do this. It's 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 invaluable, um, the support that you're providing in this regard. And and I'm so glad that our students have the opportunity to know and to see that we the collective we, the royal we, the Yuba College and the Village Yuba Center we, yes. like we love them. We love this community and we, we want to be more than we've been. And we see all, and it will take all of us. We see all of us being part of that moving forward. So this is a, a beautiful beginning to 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being the change we want to see. Yes. Being the part of <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I hope my old teacher, Mr. Edmonds and Mr. Condry, y'all see my <laughs> sister. I love y'all. Mr. Edmonds was one of my favorite teachers, okay? And Mr. Condry, you're the, oh, and Dan Turner, I know you, I love you too. Hey, Dan Turner. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was my husband's teacher, but he's family. Uh, so I, I, I had a lot of great uh, memories of being on Yuba College cam- um, campus, but uh, Mr. Edmonds, I have to give him a lot of credit um, when I first went onto the campus because he he brought forth critical thinking into my mind at that time. And, mm. and it was during a time where I needed to critically think and that I realized I wasn't. And, and just the things that he's very theatrical. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and I hope he's still a, a professor there, but um, I took English from him and, and, um, and I got all A's, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but, um, he was an he was an incredible uh, professor, and we we had um, some heated debates, but some eyes wide open, and he was able to receive from me and hear. Wait a minute, this isn't how you were teaching before. We let's stay on topic, you know. And and he received that from me. He understood that okay, I was teaching this segment stereotypically, whereas I wasn't teaching it that way before. And and it was a blessing. That's that, a big thing. Oh gosh, it, it, I I mean, I him to be able to oh shift. honey, we That's we huge. have to have another conversation. I would love to have Mr. Evans on here, <laughs> but uh, and talk about this conversation. But put him on Facebook Live. Yes, I love him. But <laughs> seriously, like. Uh, he's been a professor for a thousand years and, and he's, and he's wonderful, but there was a, a, a moment where there was a stigma that was being taught all of a sudden. And, and I was floored and we had this big debate and, and, but he heard me, mm-hmm. he wasn't listening to me anymore. He heard me. Mm-hmm. And when I went to his office and, and we had this heartfelt conversation, he looked me in my face and said, I apologize. I realized that I wasn't teaching it the way that I was supposed to teach it. And I was uh, being stereotyping. I was putting boxes on people that I shouldn't have, that I wouldn't necessarily do if I wasn't realizing what I was doing, you know? And so for that, I, I have the utmost respect for him. And, and um, Mr. Condry, I loved his ethnic voices classes. I read some of the most fantastic books that I've ever read in my life. Um, and we had, you know, some um, debates in there as well, but some eyes wide open. And I give thanks for those two men, uh, especially because they really were pivotal people in my education at Yuba College. Let's segue <laughs> into, um, into 2021, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, finally, that only took five years to get here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Longest 12 months that are really five years of anybody's life. (laughs) My God. Well, I think that, you know, with 2021, because of COVID, we are uniquely positioned to use our online presence to reach out to so many more families, 
um, students, businesses. You know, we, when we think about how we position the village of Besetter, what we say is healthy families plus healthy homes equals healthy communities. Very early on, we had created that as our tagline. Um, and so as our website, which is being developed now, will come to fruition. So we will have um, online classes. We've got some really cool projects coming up with arts and culture. Um, we've got um, a minority business development program that we're starting. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, just quickly, one of the things that I did in a previous life, um, I was a consultant. So working with small businesses, at one point, I invested over $3 million into local small businesses and managed that process. So growing businesses and working with minority business owners is something I'm very passionate about. And it's a value that we as the Village of Besetter will bring to this community um, as we work with local business owners to grow their businesses and to help them with the platform that they need to tap into the resources that already exist, but also the new resources that we will be bringing. We'll be bringing some micro loans, making sure that people have access to smaller parts, parts of money, which for a minority business owner, that small pot of money can work miracles. Mm -hmm. So we, we've just got some really exciting things coming. And, you know, if you think about it, we're only six months old. We're, we're babies. We're, we're so babies. <laughs> but, but, but with that six months, we bring a wealth of expertise and a wealth of experience um, to our business and to the community. So um, yeah, we've got a lot of really exciting things coming. We'll be posting a calendar of events coming up. And so there's lots on the horizon for us. So we just want everyone to stay tuned and um, we'll be pushing out quite a few things here really shortly. But let's hear about you. <laughs> <laughs> the first one that I'm excited about is our continued partnership, honestly. <laughs> of course, really of course. Um, so uh, Community Conversations, uh, the goal is to have one episode every single month. So yes. we invite you to tune in, keep checking back for new episodes. Um, and if you have any, uh, any questions or suggestions or anything like that, please contact us. Um, we, we invite the community to, uh, to weigh in on some of these things. Yes. Um, the other couple of things that I'm excited about, more about our equity plan actually coming from the development stage into implementation. Um, we are at Yuba College, our um, going to be pursuing a training program. It's six months for our classified staff and it's a 12 month training for our faculty that is, it comes from the Institute for Evidence-Based Change. And they have a, a training called the Caring Campus Initiative. And a big part of that work, a big scope of the work is about equity, especially yes. as it relates to the online environment, especially as it relates to when people come in on campus and we contact them, what does that look like? How does it make other people feel? What kind of climate are we creating for our students and our community and, and for each other as colleagues as well? And I am really excited to see that be, it's going to be rolled out first trainings actually start in a couple of weeks um, and it should, uh, should really begin towards the end of February. Um, and it's, it's a big, uh, big culture change for Yuba College to start implementing a lot of a lot of those bigger ideas and and really hopefully seeing a lot of uh, a lot of different community contact coming from Yuba College. So I'm thrilled about that. Right. Yeah. So. yeah. I'm I'm really excited about um, Dr. Dotson's leadership. Um, Dr. Dotson, Dr. Tani Dotson, she is the new, well, not new anymore, but she's the president of Yuba College. Um, she's, how long has she been there now? Yeah, six to seven months. So still, it's still pretty new. Yeah, she's pretty new. Right from the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just feel like under her leadership, I've seen, um, so much growth. And I, I honestly have seen her nurture a culture shift that is refreshing and her desire to serve students and partner with the community and be part of the fiber of the community, not just that college way at the end of Northville Road. She has and has an expectation that the college support the community in a way that I, I think is just incredible. Um, 
really excited that she's here. And I respect so very much what she's done in the very short period of time that, that she's been here. I just, I just think that Yuba College is going to do great things under her leadership. Yeah, she's amazing. She's been a real, um, really inspiring force here. Today was definitely a difficult day. Um, we're filming this on, on the 6th of January. And so I'm sure a lot of people have seen that she had a pretty quick message that went out to, to Yuba College um, uh, employees and it was decisive and it was, uh, it was a quick condemnation of what happened today. And say, and she, she was open and she said, you know, that this, this is an attack on a democratic process and, and that we as educators need to, and I'm going to quote her here, she says, we must also double down in our efforts to build and strengthen civil discourse, civic engagement, and a learning environment that leads to a more inclusive and equitable world for our students and our community. She is spot on with that. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the, the direction Yuba College wants. And she is amazing leadership to be taking us in that direction. You know, and I know it's so funny um, when Crystal and you and I were talking earlier um, and then even when Megan and I got together tonight before this taping, you know, I was saying that I feel raw on the inside. And I and honestly, I almost did not want to do this tonight because I wasn't sure that I could show up and celebrate when the inside of me feels so raw. Because for all the reasons why what happened today was so very (laughs) wrong. And certainly when we think about how people of color who participated in peaceful demonstrations about the murder of our people were brutalized and slaughtered. But what we saw today was a very different way of responding. <laughs> of responding. And what that does to people of color as they sit in their homes with their children and watch this on TV and they see the contradiction of how our people are treated versus how people who are not black and brown are treated. It, 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 it was hurtful. But not surprising. But not surprising. But not surprising. It takes me back to, you know, when the signs were hung up, whites mm. and colors, only, mm-hmm. you know, it takes you back to all those times where it was visible and it's visible again. Yeah. Um, we, there was a time where this was the, these attitudes and these opinions were cloaked behind um, other professional um outlets you know um Mm -hmm. they were able to control jobs and you know policing what what have you but now uh, we're in a um time where um our leadership of our country has made this okay okay yeah it's okay to to wear your sheets out loud again it's okay for you to fly your flag again it's okay for you to spew your hate again it's okay for because you to you're do those special things. people yeah yeah we just literally watch him say that um but and but the other uh, the other side of it is dark and evil and horrible and i'm saying but but you're protesting because you're tired right you're 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 storming the capital because you're tired of something correct you're you're fed up with something correct well that's the same reason that we watch march the streets because we're tired we're fed up we're over it. And, um, but it's okay that this is open like this. It absolutely needs to be done. I am so grateful that it's the cloak has been revealed. I'm so grateful that it's been removed because mm. we need to know what side of the, the fence you're on. I don't need you smiling in my face and, and, and have a knife behind my back. I'm good. Show me to you, to my face. You don't like me. And, and we can act accordingly as far as that is concerned. So today is, um, a travesty to say the least, but it's not surprising, especially for our community. We're not surprised. We know how we've been dealt with, you know, um, we knew there wasn't going to be hoses. We knew there weren't going to be dogs. We knew there was rubber bullets or tear gas. We knew that. We knew that. Um, And we know that this fight that they're fighting is not our fight. 
Um, it, it, it's not, it doesn't belong to us. And so we'll just sit back and, and watch accordingly, but, um, and pray, you know, we have to, we have to pray, but in the meantime, we have our own work to do and we are going to do that and such. So we just keep humanity in prayer and let's keep reminding them who we are. We because are the light. We're a community. Absolutely. And because those of us who are community and those of us who want to build community will stand up and stand together to do so. Mm-hmm. Those of us who reject that, and honestly, I believe there are more of us who are going to reject that than those people that we see defiling democracy. Mm-hmm. There's many, many, many more, and we come in all shades of the rainbow. Exactly. So it's not just black and brown people, it's all of us Humanity. who are American citizens who respect our imperfect democracy, but respect it then we will protect it and we will stand together. And that's where the hope and the gratitude and the love comes in. Yeah. 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 So love for our community, love for our people, love and for love, our country, definitely. you know, um, at the end of the day that love wins. Lo- Girl. <laughs> at the end of the day, love, love wins. wins. You know? That's love a great way wins. to stop this community conversation. Love wins. Yeah. Love wins. Love it wins. does. I love you. I love you back. I love you, Crystal. We love you, Crystal. <laughs> love you guys too. <laughs> and thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you have been you. amazing. And, and we also look forward to the continued partnership of this and these continued conversations and, uh, we, we, we are blessed by allies. We are blessed by yes. people who are, are opening their heart and minds to what we're trying to convey. It, it's not, this is not a woe is me. This is a, you know, let's come together and understand each other and, and love wins. And build, know, and let's build. 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 build it on the fundamentals of love. Build the concrete with love. You can't, you can't penetrate it. You know, it's, it's strong. So anyway. We're, we're excited here. to be a part of that foundation. So, Thank yeah. You. Thank you to... so much. Thank you. So thank you so much, Crystal, for being a part of this with us. We want to thank Yuba College for, again, supporting us. And we look forward to working together. Um, so thank you for joining us on our community conversation. This is Tanya Mack. I'm Megan Anderson. We are the Village Yuba Center. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our website is coming to fruition soon. And look for us in the community because we're here and we're here to support you. Life, love, and blessings.